I want you to look back, you're gonna be grateful, you know what I'm saying? In all time, in all time. It was the foundation for myself and a lot of other people. They were staying here until the morning, people yeah. started walking yeah. through, that's when they got home. Don't know how he knew actually, but he heard about this spot in Stratford. They're like, oh yeah, you're OSS, you're, you're, you're original Stratford skaters, yeah. And found this, this hub. Howdy. Hello. How are you? All right. I'm here. What skates are these? Oh, these are Beetle skates. What? Beetle. There's a guy in, um, he used to make skates in Edmonton, in Beetle. Well, skate least I will know who he is. Yeah, yeah, but um, I think he passed away. Uh, skating piece. These, they're not one of a kind, but these are Bauer RX05 skates that don't get made anymore. Yeah, these discontinued like still got them. Still got them. Yeah. Um classic Nike zooms, one of the first uh, Nike skates ever made. Um they're in a bit of a tattered state but I'm just glad to have them. <laughs> there was nothing, oh you can't do this and you can't do that. But when that was that way, it was always a competitive nature to do better. It was never in forms of a diss. I'm a better skater than you, you can't skate. Stratford weren't like that. And that was always a good thing about it. So the first time I went skating, it was my sister's birthday. Um, she just forced me to come. I, I didn't really want to go. I was, didn't really know anyone who does skating. I thought that was a kid's thing, you know? Um, but went and just had a great time. Um, I wasn't very good to begin with, but I'm quite competitive. And I saw everyone whizzing round and I wanted to be able to do that. Um, lucky for me, that night there was a lovely young marshal named Wayne, um, who spent 10 minutes with me, teaching me the basics, you know, bend your knees, lean forward. Man, those drilled into my head forever. Um, spent 10 minutes with him and, you know, it started to fall into place, you know, you start picking it up and that was it, I was just hooked. Um, my first introduction to skating was in Jamaica. Um, we went to this um, plantation house and the caretaker gave us a, a metal skates, you know, the ones that you can extend yeah. and it can fit the old village, you know, but, um, but we didn't have any um, clue of what to do with it, so, so we, we we didn't even have, we were wearing bare feet, we walked bare feet. So we didn't have any shoes, so we used to get any of the like strings and we our banana string and tie it, tie it to our bit. Um, yeah, so when we fell over, the <laughs> toenails knee, uh, and everything, yeah, bruises everywhere, yeah. I remember being in college um, at the time, I was with a friend and he's, he said, oh, I'm getting off at Stratford. I'm like, we didn't, we get off at Plasto, why are you getting off at Stratford? I don't know how he knew actually, but he heard about this spot in Stratford. So he just jumped on the central line um, all the way across and found this, this hub. He said, I'm going skating. I said, no way. You mean to tell me you've got skates on you right now? He showed me them. I said, so where? Show me. And we came out, just literally um, Morrison's car park over there. It was the only sort of lit space in terms of lighting, um, and I had a smooth ground. Um, this was the days before we, we ventured into Stratford Centre. So we would use that facility um, just to, to meet up, you know, take a small corner and practice our, our movements forwards, backwards, turning and stopping. And um, yeah, it started getting cold. <laughs> so hence why we moved into Stratford Centre. It was the foundation for myself and a lot of other people and people who came to Stratford, that was a part of it, realised it was a collective as well as an era in time that would never get replicated again, if that makes sense. So it was like, 
something bigger than we all expected it to be. And we miss it. It's not something that we can always go back to because it's time and everything like that. It's Stratford Mall, Westfields, Private and all of that stuff. But actually Stratford Centre itself, when the skating was free and available, everyone loved it. It's like every day of the week, you would always find one person, even if it was just one, just skating. Where are you going? I'm going to Stratford. You coming down? Where are you? I'm at Stratford. Oh, are we going to Stratford today? You going to Stratford on Friday? That's how it was. So the impact was big. He's not going to get the bend properly. Watch. The design of Stratford Centre was completely different. You walked to the end and there was this subway that went down. And once we'd learnt how to skate backwards, everyone used to go sliding down there. But the saddest thing is that it was a bit dirty. There's a, like a lot of um, vagrants. <laughs> you were like, sorry. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of urine there, so it was a, a test of like who could avoid that and not get themselves um, in a mess. But the main reason why I used to go to Stratford was for meetups because we used to hang off the back of buses to get ourselves down to Battersea, yeah, Route Masters. And it was different because it, it wasn't like the club, it wasn't like the rink. We had the lights and the sound system. It was just a bunch of people with headphones on whizzing around. You know, no alcohol, like, you, you kind of had to know people or you could, didn't, you could just do your own thing. Stratford Centre, right, I'll tell you something about Stratford Centre. Before the, before the gate was where McDonnell is, right, it was open. And um, we, we weren't allowed to skate, and not allowed to skate in there. And the, um, the policeman used to drive in the, with a panda car, they drove in. And sometimes they, um, I, I used to be in there practicing, dancing, whatever, and the policeman come here and he'd sit down. And he looked like, he looked like this, um, he's here for about half an hour. And then he, he come to me and he, then he said, um, excuse me, you are not allowed to skate in here. But what you are doing is so amazing. If anyone tell them, tell them I said that you can skate here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. say to yourself, that was me. <laughs> I said, I'll get a bus. Yeah, 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 I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get the bus. And then skate the rest of the exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. Um, so it's an interesting one because I started skating when I was a kid. My father taught me. Uh, for a few years we skated, but I kind of dropped off. But I really got back into it in 2012. I started skating actually when I was about seven, eight, I think like most people. 
just uh, get on skates. I remember my skates were actually broken and it was, I think I was missing a stop on one skate and it was so loud, my mum got so vexed. She took me that day, actually within an hour to the shop to go get Rochers. Uh, the impact that Stratford, skating at Stratford had on me was, uh, was astronomical to say, to say the least. Um, uh, I don't think I would be the skate around today if I didn't have Stratford. Definitely made me more competitive. Definitely. But like not in a bad way, in like in a healthy way. <laughs> in a healthy way. Because it was like you had all the older boys and I was like one of the young, just the young people type thing and I was like, yeah, I wanna be like them. So it like instilled a healthy competition into me. Definitely. The late nights, the early mornings. Um, it, it definitely made me the skater around today and without that uh, I wouldn't be who I am today in terms of the skater I am. Uh, the NC wouldn't be what it is today without Stratford and without the NC being what it is the skate scene wouldn't look the way it looks without Stratford. So the whole landscape of skating in the UK would actually look different without Stratford and that's a fact. When I went to Vauxhall I say this, I found out about Stratford. And when I came to Stratford, um, like I was telling Dan earlier, Funky was one of the first people I met and he took my stoppers off my skates and he gave me back my skates. And then it was just good luck after that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like in Stratford, I got um, nourished. Um, I got criticized, I got fed though. Um, and I really perfected the way I skated, so yeah. I would come week in, week out, and obviously you just kind of get up to your own devices and you try and progress as much as possible. You watch people, you try and implement it and whatnot. And then one day, you'll just be skating backwards. And then you'll look around and there will be a train of like five or six people behind you. And you think, oh my gosh, this is my initiation. This is, <laughs> this is, when, they this is when they decide whether like, I'm worthy or not type thing. And if they make it all the way around with you, you've made it. But if you mess up, they're not gonna follow you again for another six months. There's no way. So that type of pressure, it definitely helps. You know, just to make it a bigger picture in terms of the whole skate scene, what would London skating look like without Stratford? What would UK skating look like without Stratford? You know, the speed skating you know now today was, obviously it wasn't invented here in Stratford, but it was definitely perfected here in Stratford, for sure. The first time I saw speed skaters, I was in Hyde Park. All I heard was shh. I turned around and Emery, Igor, Jay, all them guys came past me. And this one, I'd never been to Stratford yet. And they just came past so quick and they were weaving. And I said, I want to do that. How you do that? And then Jason said to me, oh, they skate at Stratford. So oh, shit, we gotta go to Stratford then. Who influenced me? Um, quite a few people actually. My friend, number one, Bradley Panda, um, who, who introduced me to the whole skating scene. Um, one person that really did inspire a whole new generation of movement was Crafty. And I don't feel like this guy gets mentioned a lot. Um, 2S1S Crafty. Um, known for doing the run. It was a big inspiration for me. Quick feet, high knees, like, speed is skating around in a, in a tight space and that, that blew my mind. It's like, how the hell can he do that? He's going up, he's going back, he's, he's going fast, he's, he's doing too much. Like. So he's one of the um, main inspirations for what we now know as Chop and Shuffle. I don't know if he wants me to say his name on here. When I was skating at Shufford, um, he was a big influence on me today and I still talk to him today. His name's Crafty. Um, there's an inliner called James Blader. Also, we have the likes of Warren, Dylan, Bradley, Orves, Josh, Jay Burridge. We have Vernon, um, uh, Rory, and um, the one girl, um, Aidy. Um, so my mum used to go to Stratford, so definitely my mum. Um, there was Jodie. Jodie was hard. She was so, so, so good. Um, 
I think someone who we don't talk about enough is AJ. AJ was really, really good. Like he used to, when Westfield was built, he used to like chop down the stairs and stuff. Like it was absolutely insane. Um, and then you got like Lenny, Connor, um, Emre, Tiny, Bash. Gosh, there's a lot of names. There's a lot of names. And then there's even people that came years and years ago, like um, Renee, Birds, Shy. Like, yeah, loads of people. And then when I came to Stratford, funnily enough, um, a lady said to me, I got the crazy leg, and then she was like, don't make it look like everybody else. How do, if there's 20 people in a room doing a crazy leg, how does it look like you doing it? And I think that was really helpful when I first came, yeah. So when I started skating, there was a roller hockey league. And when I used to go roller disco, a lot of the North London lot, so Rory, Andy, Robert, um, a woman called AD, amazing skater, um, they really influenced me to skate good and to really practice my skills. My first, obviously, uh, kind of inspiration, you know, imprint would have to be my, my dad, my father. My second has to be Jason, aka Black Velvet. The same way I wouldn't be the same I am without Stratford, I wouldn't be the skater I am without Jason. And uh, Wayne, uh, old school legend, Wayne, is definitely a massive inspiration for me. Of course, the whole of the NC, the next chapter, you know, you got, you got Nadia, you got Dom Diego, you got Ebony, you know, these people, you know, Amir, Tommy, Frankie, Kengo, everyone in the NC, everyone, you know, people that uh, in a friendly way, I kind of pit myself against, I battle because I feel like iron sharp as iron. So I've tried to surround myself with people that uh, help push me and, you know, as much as I love them, I'm still trying to take their head off every time I see them on the rink. What makes London different? I don't even know how to put it in words. Um... Definitely the street skating vibe. I think the uh, adrenaline of flying down the street, cutting through people, buses, things, anything that will make it tiny, the, almost the impossible. I think it's got a rugged vibe to it. And obviously that's because we don't have spaces. <clears throat> we generally sk street skate, skate outside consistently getting kicked out of wherever we are because, I don't know, no one likes us. But other than that, um, yeah, I think it's that rugged vibe. And obviously, street skating through London, same thing as Nadia said, that it's, it's a challenge. You're always trying to create new challenges for yourself. It's an attitude. Uh, I've got to say, that's the best word to describe it. It's an attitude that we have. Um, it's more raw than a lot of places. It's raw and aggressive. It's something we've made as Londoners within the skate scene. We skate differently, which is why we either call it the run or chop and shuffle, which are the main two. And you really have to take part in it to really understand what that feels like. There definitely is a rawness about it, a rugged, an underground feeling. There's an underground feeling about the way we skate. We're just different. London is just different. London brings a je ne sais quoi, you know, a certain type of panache. Um, so I think that London, outside of the rink, has created a unique style that, that is really, really different to the international skate scene.
Casualty! 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 Hello! Hello! Casualty! Get on at it! Get on at it! Get on at it! Whoa! How different would my life be? Boy, it would be boring. It will be so boring because I know so many people um, from all over the world just because I just want to roll, just want to uh, go skate and enjoy myself. How different would my life be if I never skated? I don't know. I don't know who I'd, where I'd be without skating. I feel like where I started it so young, it kept me out of a lot of trouble. Obviously, you kind of get into different trouble, you get injured, like halfway across London, your mum doesn't know about it. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it, it definitely kept me out of trouble because it gave me something to do. I don't think, uh, one, I wouldn't have my son because I met his mother through, through skating, so uh, thankful for that. Um, two, I don't think I would be as calm in my later years as I am. Like, I, I, I feel like I would have probably gone and done some BS with some gang somewhere and just ended up a total different person. So it has been life changing. It has been very um, sort of disciplinary. I couldn't even tell you what my life would look like if I did not skate. I could not tell you. Skating's been, a, been me for a long time. Um, I would not know. I've built like lifetime friendships from skating uh, lifetime relationships. Uh, most importantly, I met my wife skating. So I wouldn't be, you know, a happy married man if it wasn't for skating. So, you know, luckily she skated, I skated, now we skate. So my life would be a complete U-turn. So, yeah. I was definitely where I was supposed to be at the right time. And I came into the scene, no matter how much you wish you would have come in earlier, I think you always come in at the right time. And I came in and I, I wouldn't look back. I don't think, even thinking about there's not worth thinking about because I skate and I love to skate. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'll be doing gymnastics or trampolining or maybe I'll be a pro golfer. I'd, I'd still be cool. <laughs> I'd still be cool. <laughs> I think my life would be so much more different. I think that um, my sense of adventure wouldn't be as strong not having skating in my life because being able to skate for so long and being able to defy gravity by going backwards fast or, you know, on four wheels and regardless of what age I am, has made my life somewhat exciting and magical. Skating is, it's just the core, it's at the core. I remember being younger and saying, if I ever pass away, just dump my skates in the grave with me. Yeah. I used to remember, I used to say that so many times. Skating is, it's not just an activity, it's just, it's more. It's just, there's more to it. It's just something that you feel, it gives you an inner peace. It gives you like an inner happiness in a joy. I can't even, I can't even put it in words, to be honest with you. I genuinely have no idea where I would be because I've found two of my best friends. In fact, my two best friends I found from skating. Um, and I was best man at both of their weddings. And my job, my career path that I'm on right now is in the skate industry. Um, I don't know where I'd be without skating. I said it's a wonderful journey and I'm just so happy to be a part of it. And especially now to see where these, where we're like Kai and these other young skaters. And there are so many good ones, you know, and um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to see where it's, it's going. I mean, and uh, I just hope they can take it and push it even further. Importance to certain individuals where we grew up, from being an East Londoner. It's like the crime amongst us as youth wasn't like that because we was always skating. So when other people were off doing certain things, 
It's like, no, I'm going skating. And it always turned out to be a good thing. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't come because this happened and that happened. And then you just realise, like, some people develop a serious passion for it, myself. Um, so, yeah, it's been important for a lot of people and it saved a lot of people as well. But I said the whole NC. How many times did I say the whole NC? I left out. There was a few. No, because when I, when I said it, I was like, shit, who's in the NC? Uh, 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 uh. I said Yeah, yeah. Huh? To get height. The bridge coming from you, innit? With your high tops. With your step in the back of it. <laughs> Like to run a 10k oblivious. 2015 as well. That, yeah. I, had, I had like me and Jason did a video of like, oh, get into practice for our first skate trip. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be better days where my heart in my chest, not my sleeve, I won't let them in. Nope. Loose lips. You know them ones that like you in who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> that was you. That was you. That, that was you. <laughs> A lot of guys. Okay. So I did hammers. We go back too long, <laughs> isn't it? No, I appreciate you too. Even asking me, because I'm thinking, me? Who me? Someone to be the mature, the mummy of the group. And she's the biggest kid of the group, bro. I wanted, I wanted someone to keep the kids in line. And I just feel free to express for it. Nobody could tell me what to do. I'm just... When I was on my skates, I'm in another world. You know, and no one can hold me back.